Now you may be curious about this interesting new war machine that I was going to add to my army. With some images shown right over here, you're going to see that I'm trying to replace my uh, heavy weapon teams with something that's a little bit more automated, robotic, advanced, technological. Now the point to that is to ensure that it's something that I can actually like fit with my army. The whole idea is that every army's got to fit its theme you know, be all kind of stylized. And I'm a huge fan of customization and special treatment. While looking through, I found this website of these wonderful looking models. And from the first glance, you think, oh, these look great. But then something I didn't really consider is that these are digital models. Yes, materials made digitally, you know, scan, blueprint, but I didn't realize how digital it was. So when I actually got the delivery in, it came in these little white boxes and the weird thing about these little white boxes is that um there's no manual there's no directions there's, there's just there's nothing there's just the white box like what what so now that we got the white box we're going to open these so we got this box open and again no manual nothing just what is that it's like just some resin I don't even know what I'm looking at so we got this machine but the machine is broken into like a dozen little bits look at this I, I, I really have no idea what I'm looking at it's it's all like oh my see this is why we get Citadel products you know games workshop products because they don't come like this just just kind of i'd say this is this is just terrible um you can't i mean i guess getting a razor and getting some bits you can chop it up and really clean it up uh, but i don't even know which pieces go where and there's a lot of small pieces here however that ain't gonna stop me chop chop so we are going to start trying to get this together. Now, I have kind of went through another one just so I know what I was doing, and I've kind of figured out some things I need to do and some things I don't need to do. Um, starting with clipping this, but keeping this little notch here, right right here, these, these this little notch, because that notch is gonna be very useful in the future. You'll see, uh, I didn't keep it when I first was trying to clip things out with another one I was making and I realized my terrible mistake doing that so now we are going to uh, I don't know cut cut this piece off I think right right here I come on I may have broken it but we're going to pretend we didn't break anything Okay, so the next thing we're gonna try to do... Oh no, this gun's all bent. That's okay, we're not gonna use this gun. Trash. So, let's continue with something that we are going to use. We're going to use this. Uh, I may have just broken it. So... We got a razor to try to be more careful this time. Oh, I hope you can hear that squeaking. That's that's nice. That's nice. Okay, let's let's just do this. Okay, okay, okay. Now, right now, I'm gluing it together because I literally broke it in half. These videos are not instructions on how to do this. These videos are for my pleasure only, so please do not insist these as tutorials, even though I said the last one it was a tutorial. Listen, I can say words, alright? I'm not under law to be honest on my own channel. I can... It's my... What, what, do, you, what do you want from me? Oh, no, no, no! So this thing won't glue. So we have a solution. We're gonna use this crazy contraction and try to hold it together. So while that's gluing, we're just going to leave that as is, and then we're going to get the lid of this and shink, and then we're going to continue with the bits we need. Now right now we are trying to shave this down so that we can have a nice smooth surface.
All right. So this wire piece looks like it clicks into this. So it came with a lot more little bits than I care to put on, like a bunch of little pistons. And although those would be nice, that's a lot of effort. And we're not here to do effort. We're here just to make cool stuff and enjoy our time. Oh! Now I do like that the grinding down on this model in these bits is really easy, it's very brittle, which you think is a bad thing, but it makes filing it super convenient and really comfortable. So now we have all our bits uh, right here, we're now going to try to assemble it. Fine, I'll leave. Hmm. You know, I really like this design, I'm a big fan of how it looks. You know what? I like it so much, why don't we have a whole team of these heavy weapon robots? A lot more. Pew pew pew, pew pew pew, pew pew pew, I'm bored, I am losing my mind. Don't worry, Gores. You haven't lost your mind yet. I'm telling you right now, these little walkers, these little guys, they take so much more effort than you think they would. Holy moly. Oh, moly. All right, there we go. I had to stick this one up because the toe kept falling off and glue kept sticking on my fingers. It was a disaster, whatever. Point is, I got them all. I have I have all my last cannons and I'm exhausted. This will continue, all right. All right, let's do this. All right, we're back, and we have finished all of the spray painting for these nice little figurines. These little guys of ours. So, what are we gonna do with all of them? Well, now comes the part that we all love. We paint them! So we're gonna paint them each individually. Uh, no, lie, we're not gonna paint them individually. No, we're not doing any of that. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to paint various steps all at the same time because why would I do them individual when I could just do all the layers in a routine. So the paints we're going to use are Sikrax, Sikrax Bronze, Sikrax Bronze, Screaming Bell, Balthazar, no we're not using Balthazar, that's a lie. We're going to use my custom red, this, this. So this is going to be for the black wires and cables, this is going to be for the electric lights and whatnot. Uh, this one's going to be for like a, uh, one of the... I lied, we're not using this. So let's start with the basics, let's get the, um... I don't know, what am I doing? Let's get the machinery done. So I'm going to just do several bits with the Synrax bronze because I want to make it so that it has multiple different material. It just adds more depth, right? We're going to use ourselves the um, Layers Medium Brush. Good old, uh, good old standard. You know, just the last episode I was saying that these things aren't worth it, but generally speaking, I use these brushes more than I use the white ones here. But if you were to get an alternative, these army brushes are pretty nice. They're triangles, so they kind of fit your hand pretty well. And I do use them for certain brush sizes. They have some really small ones great for poking stuff with. So anyway, let us continue. Now I'm just going to uh, literally, since all the parts I want to make bronze are kind of sticking off the pipe, I don't actually need to be very careful about it. 
it can actually work really well. I just go and do this. Chop, 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 chop. And it goes on to all the top parts and ignores the bottom parts. You just don't want to do this process slowly because if you do it slowly, it actually the brushes have time to get into the crevices. If you do it fast, it doesn't get into the crevices. Or at least I'd like to think it doesn't. I don't know. I don't really know at all. Do I know anything? I'm a guy on YouTube. You, you, why would you trust me with any advice? And there we go. We got a nice little bronze to this, but let's continue with the next several parts of bronze we're going to have to do. We got the bronze done in this boy. Look at that. Look at that bronze on this guy. That looks nice. Pretty much he's set to go, but let's add more detail to him. Why not? Uh, so we got a few more to add the nice old Synrax bronze to until we go to the next step. As a viewer, you may be wondering, why? Why do I make these videos? Well, there's a few reasons, a few motives. One, I like to hear my own voice. I mean, come on, I got a good voice. I, I like, I like hearing it. Um, uh, two, because uh, you know, I think it's fun. It's fun. It's fun to do. It's fun to do. Three, these are not. Uh, good advice from professional painter. This is the guy that's like a guy you're going to college with, a, a roommate, a, a neighbor. He's just a friend who knows a little bit who might be able to help you get started, but not anything to really get you going. If you really want to get professional video content, then I suggest you check out the Mavericks channel where I will be providing much more professional and a little bit more better advisable stories and content. Um, future being one about primers and the choice of primers and the use of them. Things like that. And in the next uh, video, who knows what that'll be. Uh, on my own channel here, I'd like to paint a tank. Good old Hydra flak gun. Because that would be fun. I have this method I like using that I think you'd think is very entertaining to watch. It's kind of aggressive. I use uh, really big paintbrushes and I do a lot of strong strokes that you'd think would break the model. Oh, uh, you'd love it. Hey, I got some bronze on my model here. That's okay. You know, I got some bronze in the spot I ain't should be. Well, that's, that's fine. We probably can just rub it right off. Let's just take a part of this clean napkin. Roll it up to a nice little needle. Okay, I bet we can, right? I got a paintbrush in my mouth. Um, let's just kind of see if we can rub it off. Easy. Problem uh, averted. You're looking at these guys and you're like, wow. How did they make them look so nice and metallic and whatnot? Well, I used two things. This guy. Lead Belcher primer is magical. Any metal primer is magical because they honestly just, oh, they can make anything look great. And as black is put on first and then this, you can easily just make it shine more. I got this from my local hobby shop, the Mavericks guys, wonderful guys, right? And, um, I suggest, I recommend that you at least get a chrome, a metal primer of some kind and try it out on some kind of heavy machinery or vehicles and whatnot. I mean, if you're painting Necrons, prime them black, prime them uh, metal and uh, any kind of metal really. I guess a metal bronze would work. And then do a bit of um, null oil and voila, you're done. 
shade complete. Going like, look at that, nice and nice and pretty. Oh, I love the metal. I love the bronze. Oh, but Wars, like, I did so good. How can I paint like that? Well, silly, stupid, this is how it works. You don't just paint it, you prime it. You use easier methods than you think because art is all about cheating. If you can cheat the process and make it easier for yourself, do it! What are you doing? Don't be dumb. Unless the art you're trying to make is deliberately supposed to represent the difficulty of something. It's, it's nonsense. Cheating the method is exactly the intention. What do you think digital art is? What do you think every form of modern art in the design of the direction of art? Architecture, um, paintings, digital, uh, you know, movies. If you can find a cheaper, easier method to do something that looks better or equal, do it! Three down. Two to go! You may be wondering, like, Hey Gors, I thought you said there were six. Why is there only five? Well, it's just so that I knew what kind of pattern I wanted to use to paint them. I actually uh, painted one already, and I'm using it as a reference for the rest. So, yeah. Sorry, you're not special, and you're not witnessing my first time painting these. It's just, you know, I had to figure out what I wanted to do with them. So I just kind of expected and prepared. GG. You're not special, but that's okay. No one needs to be special to be appreciated. You may be wondering why I primed them black and then I put the metal on top. I wanted to make it so that they were primarily black and I wanted to darken the metal as well as the fact that I sprayed the metal, the lead belchers, very thinly so that it would go on the model but it wouldn't really get into all the nooks and crannies and that, that was where the black is. So overall, it gives it kind of this like old, dull, um, dark iron look. All right, 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 all right. We have successfully done the bronze on all of them. So now that the bronze is done, our next one is to, uh... The red. Let's get the factory red to match the army. Look at that. Look at that man. Mmm! The red metal plating. The nice bronze. Even on his own little, uh... Back batteries. That looks nice. It's gnarly. Super quality right there. Now we gotta do that. Four more times. All right. I could not describe how utterly challenging it is to actually keep going and not just stop after the first model. Um, 
But, listen man, if I wanted to play with my little figurines, I'm allowed to, alright? I'm the one building them. You can't judge me, don't shame me, don't judge me. Bum 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 Look at this. Look at the shiny bronze parts. Look at the red plating. Oh, this war machine looks beautiful. So there's a few little extra bits we're gonna do. We're going to put some little green lights on the front of the little drones so they have an eyeball right yes and then the next thing we're going to do is uh actually we're going to do this part first before we do the eyes we're going to null oil them all of them just put this greasy oil look to them you'll darken the colors but it'll get into the creases and it'll be exactly what we want we got some non oil right here love it so we're going to just use uh, tons of this, and we're actually going to use um, the same brush we used before. Um, this time we're just going to use it much more uh, freely. We need a lot of it. We're just going to start drenching the internal work. So first, let's let's get the internal machinery, and then the leg itself. And there we are. It's nice and oiled up. Now we're gonna do this uh, four more times, and with a little movie magic, we're just gonna happen, make it all happen right now. All right, and just like that, they're all null oiled up. They're kind of a darker color. They have more depth to them. And overall, uh, now we just gotta let them dry because, you know, I've, uh, I have the blood of children on my hands. But when we do continue, I notice a few things. One, I missed a spot here with the red armor. That's okay, we'll put it on. Um, I missed us uh, the red armor on the legs for this guy. And um, I missed the bronze on this guy. But when we uh, get back to it, we'll just put those on. Uh, they might be a brighter tone, but I think we'll be fine. And then we are going to do the Abaddon Black on all the black cables. And then the eyes. And then when that's done, the very last thing is to dry brush some Screaming Bell, which is like a very reddish bronze, right over all of it. Gives it kind of a more reflective, shiny look. So yeah. Be right back. We'll be right back after this. For the little price of $99.99, you can get the Rito. We are endorsed by companies such as NVIDIA, Intel, Steam, AMD, Twitch, Nintendo, Google Stadia. We accept worldwide currencies such as Loyals, Mercs, and Chicken. Please send the monies to Roachers Industries. We support a wide variety of transportation for our products. I travel, land travel, hobble travel. Or you can pay $1,000 for the product to be shipped empty. If you have chosen the hobble travel, please keep in mind that the hobble may eat the Rito upon arrival. 
Product not yet rated. Alright. So. Let's continue. Uh, we have them all oiled up. We have them all patched up with the uh, little bits I was missing from the bronze, the brass, the whatever. We have the cables painted black. Uh, apologies if there was no recording of that. I just, uh, it's a lot of steps here and there's a lot of in and out cuts. Um, and the last thing I really would need to do is uh, we'll dry brush the brass. And then we'll do the touch up with the eyes. That should do it. And we should be done. So let's get started. We're going to get the Screaming Bell Brass. Good stuff. We're going to get this. And we are going to shake it up. And then we're going to dry brush some good old quality brass on these guys. You can see this is a very orange brass. All right, then let's uh, put it on these guys. The uh, dry brushing technique really adds a lot of life and character to these models. I mean, just, I don't think I can express it enough with this uh, but look at that look at that brassy bronzy look to it it's really pretty all right that's uh it's one done let's do another one Alright, that's two down. Let's do another one. Alright, alright. Other ones all brassed up. This dry brushing method is really nice. Just like the uh, the the null oil, you just kind of just slap it on everywhere, and you just keep brushing so like vigorously, and it works. All right, one more to go. It's the bronze, bronze finish, the dark iron look. Beautiful. And we can add the small details being those little red eyes, those little lights. But, um, that's not necessary. They're, they're set to go. Now, I would, um, now another thing the thing doesn't come with is that there aren't bases like these are from a different set uh, something with actual heavy weapon teams these bases will work perfectly for them however they don't come with bases which you know I don't blame them for because how are they supposed to predict what people are going to use them for but they do design them to be exactly replicas of blast cannons so 
it is also at the same time a little silly they wouldn't come with a base they're gonna use the same design but you know they look great they look awesome and uh, with some really nice looking textured bases uh, they will be a fine addition to the army overall I'd say if you're a crafty person and you really like designing your own kind of custom specialized army I would highly recommend you try out some more Morton uh, Mordian uh, products but just keep in mind the production the material and the steps needed to actually make their products don't come with manuals are casted in horrible resin design um, resin pieces and um, do take a little bit of work to put together so at your own risk and at your own effort beyond that they can look really nice once put together I might actually get some more from them, but not too much more. I'm gonna understand this experience is very educational for future products made by them. Anyway, uh, that's um, that's a little review of the uh, heavy weapon walkers, and a little trial on showing a nice way to make them look like they can be part of your army. Thank you for your time. Goodbye and good night.